All right, welcome everybody. Um, we have a panel session, OpenStack Federation panel, past, present, and future. Uh, just a brief introduction. Um, you know, many of us have been working in Keystone for many a year, and I remember you know where Keystone started. In the early days, it had some basic capabilities. It did not have um, a lot of security. It didn't have the notion of being able to have secure connections from Keystone to LDAP or Active Directory. And so a lot of us, a lot of the folks you see here jumped in, and not only did we actually add secure connections, but then we started adding the ability to integrate into LDAPs and Active Directories, and then integrate into multiple LDAPs and Active Directories. Um, and of course, that was never enough, right? And then people came to us with terms like Federation and SAML and OpenID Connect. And so what you've seen is uh, the team's put a lot of work into adding Federation support to Keystone. And this is a great panel session to talk about you know, where we were, where we're going, uh, what we're going to do. So we have a lot of wonderful speaker speakers here. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, we're going to first start with Joe Savick. Hi. We're sitting out of order. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> OK, uh, my name is Joe Savick. I'm a senior manager of product over at Rackspace. And been working on uh, brilliant people working on the Keystone project and now the Barbican project. And excited to, to move the ball on Federation even further down the road. All right, next one is uh, Steve Martinelli. Uh, hi, I'm Steve Marnelli. I'm going to be the Keystone PTL for the Mitaka release. Uh, I've been working on Keystone for a while and working a lot on the Federation bits. So uh, that's it. Excellent. Uh, we're going to go next to Marek. Yeah, hey, I'm Marek Dennis. I work at CERN in Switzerland. I'm uh, Keystone Core as well, and I focus mainly on the Identity Federation in OpenStack. Now we're going to move on to uh, Doug Menzabal. Yeah, so I'm Douglas Mendiswell. Uh, I am the current Barbican PTL for Mitaka, and I've been PTL for Barbican for the last two cycles as well. Okay, and last but not least, we'll go on to uh, Klaus Wierenga. Yes, Klaus Wierenga, uh, Identity Architect for Cisco Cloud Services. Uh, mm. I'll take a little bit longer because I'm kind of the new kid on the block. Um, mm. I guess that's why I'm on the side of the podium, that they can <laughs> shove me off. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm relatively new to OpenStack. I, I have a long history in identity and federated identity. Um, those of you who are from academia may know a service that I built almost 15 years ago at Jerome for Wi-Fi roaming. I've been involved in the, the start of Edugain, the uh, higher ed federation of federations. And when I moved to Cisco, I uh, start, kept working on mobility and, and federations. And for a year now, I'm uh, at uh, Cisco Cloud Services and, and basically trying <laughs> to uh, um, put everything I learned about federations and federated identity into what we do with uh, OpenStack. Excellent. Thank you, Klaus. So we're going to start with um, Federation Past. And uh, first question goes to Merrick. Um, who is this CERN group? And you know, why do they do Identity Federation? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, who is this CERN? CERN is the um, um, High Energy Physics Laboratory based in, uh, in Europe, in Switzerland. We're basically trying to solve the, the mystery of the universe, try to understand how the universe was created and um, why do we have mass? Uh, well, well, yeah, why do I have some weight? And, and uh, for that, we, we, we do some kind of an experiments. Uh, we have the 27 kilometers long ring under the, the ground uh, where we accelerate the, par the particles to the speed of light, then we collide them, and in the controlled environment, we see how, it, how they behave. And what what new can we see? And for this, um, this is this is like the one of our our uh, detectors. It's like uh, 30, 30 meters in diameter, so it's pretty huge. So for this, we our detectors produce a lot of data. And when I when I say lots, uh, the bandwidth is, bandwidth is uh, roughly one petabyte of data per second. So it's it's really a lot. Of course, okay, most most of the data is is actually filtered out by by the um, our sophisticated electronics. But basically. 
what's interesting and what's stored needs to be processed, analyzed, and then some, you know, some people just get the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Um, so we end up with 30 petabytes of valuable data per year that needs to be analyzed. Of course, we cannot afford building all the data centers to do all the work by, by ourselves. Plus, this is the scientific uh, collaboration, so we are open to the collaboration. And um, we uh, right now we, we rely on the on the WRCG, so uh, World LHC Computing Grid. But we are also looking into uh, cloud computing um, solutions. Uh, we we are looking for the ways for integrating with uh, various pri private and pr public cloud providers, and clearly the federation is the is the best way to do this because we can focus on the you know doing what we mean to do, so finding the the physics um, like equations and the, and and the results instead of just uh, just you know managing the accounts and just and just you know probably just fixing the errors when somebody is not. Uh, deleted from the project or not, is not added to the project. So we are clearly we need a federation um, for just you know just moving the ball. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. So um, now we'll move on to some other folks. Um, we'll start with Steve. Steve, uh, how do you use federation today at your respective company, IBM? Are you sure you don't know? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't pay attention to a lot of things. <laughs> um, well, uh, so we're looking into it right now. Um, so one of the main things, well, we have products that um, act as identity providers that um, you can use. So we have things like Tivoli uh, Federated Identity Manager and WebSphere Liberty, Liberty which act as identity providers, which you can then connect to Keystone and OpenStack. Uh, additionally, we also had uh, have some um, OpenStack offerings that, you know, because it's essentially vanilla OpenStack, the vanilla federation uh, OpenStack code, and as a result, we get the federation bits there. And one of the things that we're looking into now is connecting our Bluemix offering, which is based on Cloud Foundry, <laughs> And tying it into OpenStack, into our OpenStack offering, so like things like BlueBox and our BlueBox on Software. So um, that's something that we're going to look into. Excellent, thank you, Joe. How how do you use uh, Federation at your respective company, Rackspace? Sure, we, we typically we take a look at three different use cases, and part of it is the same use case that you mentioned, Steve, of uh, BlueMix and and tying it in with OpenStack. Uh, over at Rackspace, uh, we have our dedicated world. We use through a certain control panel that we have, website. Uh, and then we have our cloud world through a separate one. And so we use federated identity in between these two different hosted uh, control panels that we fully trust over at Rackspace to kind of tie them together and allow our users to use the same provisioned identity across both of them. Um, so we, we use SAML in that case. Uh, another use case is Rackspace is a managed service provider. So uh, Rackers have access when they're ever supporting customers to be able to, to go from a support tool over to a control panel and be able to help answer cu customers. And so there's, there's a SAML integration there from a uh, Racker or Rackspace employee credential that's provisioned and wanting to federate over to, to a different system. And then the third use case are users uh, using things like Active Directory Federation Services, Tivoli Fem, wanting to come into, into the, our different control panels that we have. Excellent, thank you. Um, Klaus, same question. How do we uh, use Federation at Cisco? And I believe you have a chart. I do. Yes, um, I, I believe we do things a little bit different from what I've heard at the, at the previous uh, conference, uh, there was a lot of talk about federation, uh, <coughs> there is the whole Keystone to Keystone federation stuff going on, and, and I thought it was best to uh, to show in a slide what, what we're doing. Uh, basically what we, what we try to do is to um, be an intermediary between the, the companies that are our customers and uh, the services that we or 
third parties are offering. And, um, and, and that way, uh, or to put it in identity terms, uh, we, uh, we act as an, uh, an IDP towards the relying parties, the service providers, and we act as an SP uh, to the customer IDPs. So the nice thing about that is that uh, they have to manage only one trust relation and, and more importantly, we only have to manage one trust relation per, uh, per customer. And the same towards the, the relying parties. I, I keep saying relying party because service providers, at least inside Cisco, a much overloaded term, um, even though it's the SAML terminology. Um, so so um, instead of essentially an, an N squared uh, trust establishment problem, we bring it down to an order of magnitude of N uh, problem. And um, and associated with that, we, um, we can pairwise change whatever federation protocol we talk uh, either to the relying parties or to the identity provider. So if uh, the, the customer wants to talk SAML 1.1 or SAML 2 or OpenID Connect or OAuth 2, we don't care. We can do that. <coughs> Southbound, we can still at the moment talk SAML, but in the future I expect uh, actually that uh, that we will do more uh, OpenID Connect because it's a little bit more API uh, friendly. Um, and um, uh, let's see, so, uh, so, so really it, it is about scaling to large numbers. I, I think that's the big problem uh, that we're trying to solve here. Um, and the, the kind of a, a philosophical um, design criterion I liked, and that's perhaps because I, I come from a little bit different background, I like to keep as much as possible out of OpenStack. I want to treat OpenStack like just any other relying party um, and, uh, and have it do the minimal set of capabilities that is needed to function correctly, but everything else we've spent 20 years, and if you um, uh, take, take Kerberos also as, a, as an example of a, albeit crippled federation protocol even longer than that, we've been working on making identity and federation, federated identity work. We want it to work the same also to other types of relying parties, uh, the WebEx, Spark, uh, whatever web-based uh, service uh, you have. Um, so if we would, were to put it all that functionality into Keystone, we could not leverage it for, for the other services. So as much as possible out of, uh, out of OpenStack. And with that, I'm still on the, on the stage, so that's, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> with that, I'll hand it back. We're a very inclusive group. We are OpenStack. Um, <laughs> Moving on to the next question, we'll start with Steve. Steve, what's your favorite federation or identity protocol and why? <laughs> you can just do. <laughs> um, uh, I like OpenID Connect. Uh, SAML is XML based, which makes it more difficult with Python. OpenID Connect, you know, JSON friendly, so is Python. It works great, and it's really easy to get a identity provider because Google talks OpenID Connect, and I can I already have a credential there, so it makes it easy to test out. <laughs> Excellent, Joe. Same question. You know, mine changes. It depends on the target market. So when we're looking at uh, reaching out to enterprises, it's SAML. They 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 typically run identity providers that could speak SAML over OpenID Connect. If we're looking at the developer market, maybe OpenID Connect might be better. Mm -hmm. um, if nobody cares, maybe Skim. Skim is provision, it's not federation at all, and it's just being able to speak uh, and replicate uh, identities all around. You know, I haven't heard the term Skim for like a year and a half at this conference. But, I, but I, there, there was, uh, I think it was Portland, I heard it a lot, and then since then just you. So I want to hear more skim. Um, I had it on my slide, but I removed it. I thought, let's not uh, bring that up. <laughs> this is the term that's going to push them over the edge and get me off the stage. So I'll take this one off. Yeah, he's back on stage. Klaus, same question. Yeah, 
I, I have to say my favorite federation protocol is radius uh, i don't i know it's not used inside openstack uh, in app app uh, use i should have said it in my introduction <laughs> i'm also the app chair in the itf um, but actually app doesn't use it in the way i like it uh, it uh, what i like about radius is that it's simple it has one purpose and one on, one purpose only and it does that well i think all of the other protocols are at a severe risk of being overloaded and uh, well saml is a good example of that but that's saml 2 is 10 years old i'm sure open id connect will go the same way yeah you know klaus you just gave me a horrible flashback i was sent to amsterdam for a customer crit sit we were doing wireless devices and radius was involved and it wasn't working so i'm, I'm having cold sweats that you even brought that up um merrick I think I will go my supportive vote for SAML, um, even though it's, a SAML, it's XML. Mm. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's at least 10 years old, and so it, this means, uh, if it's still on the market, it means this is trusted and tested. So, yeah, SAML. Okay. Doug, you've been awful shy and quiet. I think you ought to chime in. What is your favorite uh, protocol? <coughs> you can't hide anymore. So, I, as far as identity protocols go, yeah, I, I would Your have choice. to go with whatever the JSON one was. That's super. <laughs> so, my <laughs> identity, uh, OpenID Connect, that's the one. So identity them. Not, not my strong suit. That's all right. You just, when we're ready to talk key management. We'll, we're getting there, sir. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We're getting there. All right. Excellent. I'm glad we put you on the spot there. Nice hazing for the new guy, right, Joe? It was a good answer. Good answer. Um, okay, so let's talk a little about Federation future. Uh, we'll go with Joe first. Joe, is Federation limited to only identities for OpenStack? Yes. Are there other federatable things? <laughs> 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 yeah, so there's, there's a couple use cases out there that could invoke Federation. Uh, one of them that we're looking at and I talked about uh, earlier today over at the design area uh, was bring your own key use cases. It's a use case where um, Actually, you were supposed to talk about this, aren't you? Here. He will. It's the next question for him. So you can. <laughs> um, do you want to go into the next question? Sure. Sure. Let's, let's um, the then we'll thing. come back to, to Steve since he got cut up. Doug, how do you see Federation and bring your own key working? What are the use cases? So there's, I think Federation is interesting, and, and we're still building Barbican Federation as a way to, to provide a bring your own key uh, workflow to OpenStack. Uh, and so use cases for that would be customers that are sort of security conscious. They don't particularly want to trust a Barbican that is run in a public cloud with all their secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and bring your own key would provide a way for them to keep ownership of, mm -hmm. of any secret material and only federate that out to the public cloud when needed. Excellent. Also, oh, sorry. Keep going, keep going. One more. Uh, different use case, uh, some customers may be under some kind of compliance regime whereby they cannot actually save those secret things to a public cloud and they have to sort of keep ownership of those things in mm -hmm. their premise. So we see bring your own key slash federation as a way to, to achieve that. Outstanding. And uh, we'll come back to Steve. Uh, same question we gave Joe. Is federation limited only to identities for OpenStack? Are there other federatable things? Uh, yeah, so yesterday during the cross-project session, we had a talk about federation and federating it with other things in OpenStack. And one of the cases that the guys from uh, the Massachusetts Open Cloud uh, group were talking about, and they prototyped it, is, um, you know, you have uh, your, your Nova instances in one location and then you have your Cinder volumes in another location and you want to attach volumes to instances that are not in your cloud that are on another cloud. So that's, another, that's one instance. And um, really there's quite a few use cases. And in the same kind of flow, there's um, storing objects, but you want to sign the objects and you want to get the key from Barbican. So another one there. Another one is uh, Nova and Glance. You want to you know, set your, create instances in one area and then you want to get images from another location, completely other cloud or something. Okay. Or com yeah. <coughs> All right, thank you. All right, this question is going to be going first to Doug and then Joe. What are the challenges organizations will face 
in a bring your own key model. And then I'm gonna also add to this an imprompt. You know, also kind of talk about how this works, how you can sort of bring your own key and meet compliance. I think that might be something to, to expand upon a little bit as well. Okay, so how can you, sorry, the, I got confused with the second part of the question. We'll totally take it as two. Out. First, what are the okay. challenges? Challenges, yes, space the sorry. BYO key. Uh, so at, as soon as a, 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 some organization decides they want to bring their own key, then, then the responsibility of managing those keys falls on them. Right, and so you, you're going to have to uh, think about things about you know the key storage, uh, key management as far as expiration, rotation, uh, sort of all those things. Um, I think Barbican can help with that. Uh, being able to deploy a, a Barbican in, in your own prem would help you uh, sort of with with managing that key life cycle uh, or secret life cycle. Um, and then the second part of the question was? Well, just more to help people understand how that bring your own key magic works, right? Magic I, I brought works. my own key, but okay. my key is still safe and compliant. So uh, we're still sort of in the design phase of this. We had a, a design session earlier today, and then one of, actually two of them, we, we, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of, of different points of view on how this should work. Uh, sort of at a high level, what we're thinking is, you know, you have, you have your private Barbican hosting your own keys that you own. Uh, and then you send a request to say uh, Nova to boot from an encrypted Cinder volume. Mm -hmm. uh, and you tell it, hey, you know, the, use this key that's, that's on my prem. You give it a, rest, a, a reference to a key that, that is held in the private Barbican. Mm -hmm. um, Nova then or, or would talk to Cinder and say, hey, I need this volume. And then it would talk to a public Barbican saying, hey, I need this key that's federated somewhere. And then the two Barbicans will sort of talk to each other mm -hmm. and and then the public barbican would get that key hand it over to cinder mm -hmm. magic would happen uh sort of the point here is that the the key even though it's stored in your private barbican it does exist in the cloud for some time uh, but it's not stored there so uh, uh, this would help with sort of a tax at rest i suppose where where you don't <coughs> Your key is in the cloud only when it's being used, but then when mm -hmm. it's not being used, it's only inside your prem. Gotcha. Uh, Joe, same question. Yeah, absolutely. So um, another use case that uh, uh, customers may, may or problem uh, customers may find when doing the bring your own key is, is what they experience today with AWS and Azure. Azure has a bring your own key model, but there are products that they have that don't support this, this kind of key federation or keys that you brought. Uh, one being Exchange Online isn't supported. Um, in the AWS world, I think they launched on S3, but not EC2 yet for the same reason. So it's, hey, with my provision keys, I could do everything that your, your uh, service offers, but when I bring my own key, there are certain things I can't do. And this is another use case where Barbican can actually help because when the public cloud or service provider runs Barbican, it can act as the broker in between the different products that the service provider hosts. And so it's a... For Nova, it's no difference in between a provision key and a brought your own key. Same thing for Cinder, same thing for Keystone even, you know? There's, it makes it a whole lot easier for customers to be able to, to know what they're getting into and being able to leverage the whole portfolio of a service provider. Okay. And, you know, you know, thinking about these keys and the bring, bring your own key model and you temporarily go from the private Barbican to the public Barbican, you think, Hey, how are we tracking these keys? What are we doing here? Have you thought about audit support, federation-based audit support, Joe? Yeah, that's the other thing is that uh, if I'm dealing with so many different service providers, multiple different clouds, either um, I'm floating up different different flavors of OpenStack too, I, I want to be able to know that the events that are being produced in these different OpenStack clouds are really coming from the service provider and that they're really intended for me and I can actually decrypt them using my own key. So this is another use case where if we get the foundation of key federation in place, we can start uh, using the, the pieces that are there with CATF and PyCATF uh, with the nozzle libraries to be able to sign the CATF events with, with a, uh, a key that only, only the customer has. They could decrypt those events, know that there wasn't a man in the middle attack and that trust relationship still exists in between the customer and the service provider. So now they know, hey, I'm getting all these different auto events and these were truly intended for me and this is truly intended for the resources on my tenants. Yeah, it's an outstanding use case and uh, we'll definitely get you connected with our 
CADF gurus, Matt Rukowski, and uh, we're having those discussions. Excellent. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to sort of setup and problems with federation. Could there be problems with federation? Could there be setup problems with federation? Um, so we'll start with Klaus. Klaus, is Identity Federation and Keystone ready for enterprise adoption? Um, <laughs> the, the, well, close to the stage, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's perfect. No, no uh, the, the, the thing is, um, I I think it is good enough, I, mm -hmm. and that is in uh, in this world already very important. Um, the there are s some issues, but like I explained, by taking away most of the processing out mm -hmm. of OpenStack, we can pretty much do everything we want. There are some some nasty things that we'll get to later if you ask about uh, things that need to be solved. But uh, generally speaking, it's okay. I, I am a bit concerned about the the fact, uh, but, but I, I guess that's an, a general problem for OpenStack that there is. Um, so little code base uh, and there is one implementation and that's it and uh, mm. it gets reviewed but uh, i guess my my itf background likes multiple implementations for everything and uh, and scrutinizing and comparing and stuff like that so that that, mm. that bothers me a little bit about something that is so tightly integrated with security mm -hmm. Well, that's something to think about if there's, you know, typically how OpenStack solves that is with, you know, multiple plug-in points, extension points, plug-in models, driver models. So, you know, some, some things to discuss with the Keystone team, most certainly. Uh, very, very good data points. Uh, we're going to ask the same question, I believe, to Steve. So the, so I would really, really, really like it if, more people would kick the tires on it and on the current federation implementation and just to really stress it and see how it works. I know a lot of guys at Red Hat have done that. We've done it at IBM. A lot of the Rackers have done it. Um, and I just, and the, the feedback's been, oh, you know, it's good enough. And I, and I myself can find some issues with it, I think. I think some things can be improved. Uh, command line interactions can be better. We can start caching things to make it faster. Um, caching assertions, caching tokens. Um, we could also improve the mapping engine a little bit more. Um, but I mean, otherwise, I think it's a pretty good. And I'm totally not biased here. I think it's. I think it's. It's good enough for now, and I just want really. I just want a whole lot of feedback from it and. Yeah, I just want folks to really kick the tires on it. Okay, thank you, Steve. Joe, same question. Yeah, I think I think there's some. It's it's good enough, but you're, there's a t there's a cost that 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 implementers have to be have to be able to pay. Um, and some of the costs that we're looking at is uh, manageability of it. Um, there's use cases where a customer wants to be able to swap out the the key, the key that they're using for the SAML signature, and and. The key is handled by the Apache mod chip and actually the decryption of it. And so that requires an operator to go in. And on a large public cloud, when you're having hundreds of thousands of customers, <laughs> that gets to be kind of a pain when a, when a customer wants to be able to swap out a key. Um, there's other concerns, though, as well, that, that are kind of more uh, specific with Keystone overall, uh, such as the mapping isn't nearly as granular as I want it to be for the authorization. This is the same true for fed, uh, for provisioned users as well. I can't go down and I can't uh, do fine grain access control. I can't give cost access only to the dev environment because I don't trust them with my prod environment. Like Things like that, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think there's a more robust authorization rules that, uh, that Keystone needs to put in place. That sounds very important. Did you hear that, Henry? <laughs> All right, good to know, good to know. Um, excellent. So we're going to go on to our next question here. We'll start with Joe, since he, he sort of started touching upon this. Joe, how can we enable more authorization grants through assertions? Yeah, um, geez, I wish I didn't post that Cedar question on there. Um, 
Uh, the, this one's tough because uh, we've been down, we've talked about this quite a while in Keystone about dynamic policy and getting into dynamic policy for for the policy JSON file and making that available in a central store so that way customers can see the capabilities that they actually have and they're granted through their token. But then there's a deeper level too that goes through uh, fi for fine grain access control. And uh, really it's it's baby step to baby step and these these big these are big baby steps that we have to take. That's the problem. And so I, I think really we need, we have two big problems to solve for within Keystone. That, that's policy management. Policy is being able to, to understand the capabilities available. Um, and then fine-grained access control, being able to limit those capabilities to specific resources like servers or load balancers. And, and so I think we need some help on this. OK. Steve, same question. Yes. Um. Uh, Joe effectively answered that one. Um, we have some work to do on Keystone itself. I mean, this is outside of the Federation scope to really be better at uh, granting control to certain resources and endpoints, um, more fine grain access control. And this is outside of the scope of Federation, just Keystone mm -hmm. proper. I mean, well, I, I think that you, we would float it up through the mapping element for it to be available to federated users. So it's really just the, the getting the framework in place for that authorization. Well, you, you need the framework on both sides. You need the framework on the mapping side and your yeah. framework on the support in Keystone for the more fine grain operations. Uh, Klaus, same question. Did I sign up for this one too? Uh, You're allowed to pass one. You don't like those game shows? Only as the new uh, guy. <laughs> Just one though. Actually, um, it, it sounds a little bit uh, repetitive, but uh, also there, I we, we are actually now kind of forced to do part of the authorization outside of OpenStack uh, to, to circumvent things mm -hmm. like the, the God token and, and stuff like that that we really don't want to give to uh, our customers. Um, so, so in general, I, I would like to see more of the, the, the authorization heavy lifting happening outside OpenStack and for, for, for the XML lovers that could be something like XML, but, but something else might also be possible. I don't, I don't care so much about it. Um, what is being used? I have to admit I didn't think much about it yet because we have lots of other problems to solve, but it, it, th there is an element of reinventing the wheel uh, I inside OpenStack, and, and that is another thing that concerns me a bit. Okay. Uh, and the next question is for Klaus. I hope he does realize his name's on it. Um, uh, do we do federation inside OpenStack, uh, you know, a la Keystone to Keystone, or external? Yeah, yeah so, so uh, I actually had a, had a bit of a discussion with Marek about that um, yesterday evening. Um, I guess it depends, uh, is, the, is the question. And, and not even so much for technical reasons than for organizational uh, reasons. I, I, I see a case for Keystone to Keystone Federation, for instance, uh, things like uh, breaking out from a private cloud to the public cloud. And then it kind of makes sense to just uh, use Keystone Federation to the, to the public Keystone instance. Um, but um, uh, in general, again, I, I, I prefer to do this outside, just like if you go uh, do a single sign-on from one, one website to another website, uh, you don't have those websites federate with each other. Mm -hmm. You have an IDP that supports uh, single sign-on. Um, but but there, may be, there may be organizational reasons why you want to do Keystone to Keystone. For instance, uh, Marek brought up, up the, um, the, the, the issue that sometimes you as an organizational unit, you don't have control over what uh, what happens at the central IT, uh, and and you can perhaps not control the the federation of uh, at that level. And then Keystone to Keystone uh, might be a, a good solution. Uh, if you my take is if you hold all the elements in the in the ecosystem, so IDP. Um, the relying parties, etc. I see little reason to uh, to do it inside OpenStack, to be honest. Okay. All right. We're now on to our uh, challenge questions, and I'm going to throw this out to whoever wants to try and attempt to answer it. 
Uh, first challenge question is, where do you see other OpenStack projects needing enhancements to better enable federation slash hybrid cloud support? <laughs> I was thinking about Joe when I asked this. And anyone else who wants to answer? Um, so for identity federation, there, there's always a horizon answer and make it easier, more manageable to be able to do IDPs. But then, then a lot of stuff is also on Keystone as far as being able to allow easier rotation of keys, being able to, to help manage my, my identity provider within Keystone too. Um, but then the, there's the other objects. So uh, Key Federation, we talked about that within Barbican. Um, there's some work with Oslo and Cadiff as well on adoption. Mm -hmm. These are all integration services, and, and they require an adoption effort after we, uh, we build it out. And so the, most of the brunt work is trying to get other services to, to use it and expose it. OK. Did anyone else want to try to answer that? We're good. OK. We're going to go to our lightning round. We're about to wrap up here. Everybody gets to give a one-minute answer. Uh, what's the next big, se next big thing you would like to see happen in the OpenStack Federation space? We'll start with Steve. Federating other services. So either, you know, interaction between, oh, I got to go fast. Uh, interacting between Barbican and Swift, Nova and Cinder, Nova, Glance, okay. those, those sort of things. Am I, did I get under a minute? You did fabulous. Okay, cool. Merrick, your turn. Same thing, federating services, or just um, going into like the, another layer of abstraction, so you can spread your clouds across multiple providers, and you can, I mean, from the user perspective, you can see this as a one cloud, so both those, those two things. Doug? So, you know, I, I obviously, I want to see some Barbican federation, uh, uh, especially trying to make this uh, sort of transparent to, to the things that are using the federated thing, right? So it, in, in the public cloud, have it have Nova never know that, that it's using a federated key uh, and, and stuff like that. Cool. Joe? Yeah, I like his answer. Um, <laughs> I also, uh, on top of that, I want to see Keystone use Barbican for the key management stuff and uh, implement key rotation in one place and make that available to customers. So. Excellent. Klaus? Yeah, I kind of uh, mentioned this before, but I, I'd like to see um, where we where we manage to get the identity management part out of uh, OpenStack, I would like to see the same happening for authorizations. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, uh, panel members, uh, that was our last question. You're you're off the hot seat. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for your wonderful answers and and the insights you gave us. So thank you very much.